prosperity. Carlin asked if we could have an opportunity to hear from those folks that are opposed to the health care reform or have some serious concerns with it. And the administration with our health care, with my nine-year-old son's health care, how am I supposed to trust you? I know that's a tough question, but I'll make it easy. Is there an option to say no to this bill? Because it doesn't seem like you said anything today. No. She may be attractive, but she has no soul. Throughout the country, we see the American people continue to revolt. They've watched over the recent months as President Obama continued the Bush-Cheney policy of bailout as he handed over $23 trillion of taxpayers' money to parasitical, London-steered financial institutions. They saw, as a result of this gutless wonder, virtually every state go bankrupt, with some states forced to send their employees into unemployment, extending furlough days, making it more difficult for families to pay their bills, and residents in California becoming subjected to the draconian cuts of that son of a Nazi. With all of this in their doorsteps, then President Obama threatens their lives with his so-called health reforms, which proposes to eliminate the unproductive in society as Hitler did. It's no wonder he lost the battle over the American people. As a matter of fact, he screwed up so badly that his controllers in London, who sought to use Obama to impose fascism in the United States, might end up assassinating him just like they have done to all U.S. presidents who have screwed up their game. Let that factor be known. But for us here in the United States, we need to continue to fight intelligently to defeat this Nazi health reform which all sane individuals, whether Democrat or Republican, do not accept. Now many of you out there who have gone to these town hall meetings have confronted your representatives directly or implicitly that Obama's plan desires to either reduce or not extend any medical assistance towards the elderly, the terminally ill, and all the other undesirables to society, according to this administration. LaRouchePag.com has provided much documentation as far back as May of this year, which proves that to be the case, and that the administration does indeed intend to set up a board which we have called a dictator of death, which will choose who deserves to live and who should die. Those representatives, including the president, as you have witnessed, have attempted to deny such claims, going as far as to say that to even suggest that is absurd. Now, of course, we all know they are lying, and we know they are lying thanks to articles written by Barack Obama's own health care advisor, Ezekiel Emanuel. One article in particular was published on January 31, 2009, in the British medical journal Lancet, where he states in respects to his policy that, when implemented, the complete live system produces a priority curve on which individuals aged between 15 and 40 years get the most substantial chance, whereas the youngest and oldest people get chances that are attenuated. Broad consensus favors adolescents over very young infants and young adults over very elderly people. Strict youngest first allocation directs scarce resources predominantly to infants. This approach seems incorrect. The death of a 20-year-old woman is intuitively worse than that of a two-month-old girl, even though the baby has had less life. The 20-year-old has had a much more developed personality than the infant and has drawn upon the investment of others to begin as yet unfulfilled projects. Adolescents have received substantial education and parental care, investments that will be wasted without a complete life. Infants, by contrast, have not yet received these investments. Remind you how infants, children, and the elderly were treated at the Auschwitz concentration camp? Remember, if you couldn't work, they'd toss you into the oven. So this Nazi, as even the media has been forced to echo LaRouche on this accusation, certainly does until, intend to kill your grandma. But still, they continue to deny our assertions. Let's look at one of the scarier sounding and more ridiculous rumors out there. That so-called death panels would decide whether senior citizens get to live or die. Well, Mr. Flanagan said, because this is a, uh, uh, an unpopular myth, uh, but a myth nonetheless, and that is that somehow this bill is going to require euthanization of seniors. It would be laughable if it wasn't so widely circulated. 
you, the viewer, are witnesses to other representatives who have denied the charges made on the question of euthanasia, or better said, the acceleration of the death rate as Hitler accomplished, such as Congressman Adam Schiff of California, whom you just saw, had denied it. But when we review the author of Section 1233 of H.R. 3200, we tend to find the contrary. Let me begin by asking, would you allow a serial killer to take care of your grandmother? Would you want Richard Gere to watch over your gerbils? Or if President Obama was pushing for health reforms, would you want a rabid pro-euthanasia congressman to write part of the legislation? If you said no to all three, good for you. But it looks like the third scenario is currently being done. Representative of Oregon Earl Blumenauer confessed that he indeed has a lot to do with the content of the current legislation as he confessed while debating with his fellow congressmen. Representative Buck McCain admonished people to read the bill and then specifically cited Section 1233. Actually, I know a little bit about this section because it's a bill that I wrote which was incorporated into the overall legislation. Almost 12 years ago, Congressman Blumenau's state was the first to legalize physician-assisted suicide. And this law has only terrorized Oregon residents who sought medical help in their darkest hours as the story of Barbara Wagner, as well as other residents of the state, tell us. In Barbara's case, and she was not the only one, requested state help upon being diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. But the reply was bluntly made that they will not pay for her chemotherapy, but would pay to help kill her under the physician-assisted suicide law. Not a very nice way to treat constituents within your own state. But regardless that this law had denied medical assistance to many cancer victims who probably had a chance to survive, and were told not to even try to, Blumenau still backs it as he defended physician-assisted suicide to the U.S. Supreme Court in 2005, which he proudly displays on his website. You could also find on his website links to a 1960s magazine which promotes both voluntary and involuntary euthanasia. So when your congressman had told you that to assert that Obama's reforms would be a policy of massive deaths is absurd or not true, he or she is full of shit and should be asked, since you have now decided to lie to us in public, tell us, Congressman, why would you go to such lengths as to defend an exact replica of Adolf Hitler's 1939 mandate as the current president has just proposed? And follow up by simply suggesting, looks like now is the time to listen to Lyndon LaRouche, don't you think? And if he still refuses, then make your way to the local store and purchase the pitchfork nearest you. I think that would probably convince him.